Now we'll enter data into the Movies table, first using the GUI and then the command line. Click on the Movies database and then on the Movies table to enter it. Click on the Insert button at the top of the screen. The input box is on the right, underneath where it says Value, allow you to enter new values into the various fields. Leave the value input box for Movie ID empty, because as this is an auto-increment field, it will automatically fill itself as records are added. In the value input box for title, enter The Twilight Sage, and as its description, enter a long straggly tale about a man with a fake beard, a void, or whatever else you want. Click Go and you'll get a confirmation message. You'll also see that the SQL query used to insert these new records is displayed, and we can use the fact that phpMyAdmin displays the SQL queries that we've just run to learn command line syntax. Copy the query and we'll adapt it to perform another insert. This time, we'll use the SQL command line. So we'll insert a new movie, just change the title to something else. I'm going to use Great Jesus of Our Time, and change the description. Click Go, and then click on Browse, and you will see the contents of the table updated. You will see that Movie ID has indeed been automatically filled in with the Twilight Sage assigned Movie ID 1 and Great Jesus of Our Time 2. Click on SQL at the top of the screen, click on Clear, and paste in the query that we've just copied and we can have a look at it. I'll just change the formatting in new lines to make it a bit clearer. This is a relatively complicated MySQL query, because it has to tell the system not just what to insert, but which value goes into which field. So this is spelled out in two clauses, first specifying in order the fields where the data is to go, and then in the same order the values to insert into each field. It starts with insert into, and then the database and table name inside backticks and separated by a dot. This dot notation identifies first the database and then the name of the table inside the database. If we're already inside a database, as we are at the moment, we're inside movies, then we can leave out the database name and just specify the table name. So let's do that. This backtick character, by the way, is at the top left of a UK or US keyboard, next to the number 1 key. Then inside round parentheses is a comma separated list of field names, again each one inside backticks, identifying in order which fields we're inserting the data into. Notice that the last field name is not followed by a comma. If by mistake you put a comma in there the command will not work and an error message will be returned. Then we have to specify what to insert, the values, again inside parentheses. This is a matching comma-separated list of values, this time inside ordinary single quotes, not backticks, of the values to insert. The order of these must match the order of the fields in the Insert Into clause. The first field movie ID is given a value of null, because thanks to the auto-increment setting in the database, it will automatically insert a value one greater than the ID of the previously inserted record so we don't enter a value here. The second value in the comma-separated list of values, the Twilight Sage, corresponds to the second field name in the Insert Into clause, the title, and the third item in the list corresponds to the third field, the description. As before, the last of the values must not be followed by a comma, or the query will fail. Now try the Insert Into query yourself by inserting a third title and description into the Movies table, which can be whatever you want. I'll put Life of Pi as the title and a silly pun as the description.
then click on Browse and you will see that this third title appears in the table and the ID number 3 has been assigned to this record. Let's do one more insert into query, this time inserting two records at once. We do this by having two lists of values in the Values clause, each in parentheses and each list separated by commas. So first of all I can remove the database name because we're already in the movie's database. Then I'll just tidy it up with some new lines so we can see what we're doing. We change the title and description to something new. So I'm going to put sightseers and a party of tourists see London from an open top bus. Comma at the end, now we can copy that and paste it back in. And change the title and description to something new. Now at this stage that won't work. Can you see why not? The reason is that comma at the end must be removed. We don't want a comma at the end of the second clause. Copy that. In case anything's wrong. And press go. And then click on browse and verify that the data has indeed been inserted. We've created a database, added tables and inserted data using the command line. That's enough for this video, but there are several general points to make at this stage. The first concerns the backticks used to enclose database names, table names and field names. In the example used here, these backticks could be omitted. We could insert another data item without them to demonstrate that this is the case. So I've removed all those backticks and now I'll put in another title and description so we can insert another record. we we'll delete that second one. And if we press go and then browse, you can see that that new record has been inserted with no problem, so the backticks weren't really necessary. The purpose of the backticks is to ensure that the query will still work if we happen to use a MySQL command name as the name of a database, a table or a field. For example, as long as I enclose it in backticks, I could name a table insert, although I certainly wouldn't recommend doing so. If we don't use backticks, we have to take care not to use words with special functions in MySQL for database, table or field names. Secondly, the carriage returns and white space in MySQL queries are purely for our own convenience, to make the commands easier to read. We can change this to whatever style we find easiest to read, or if we're working for someone else, whatever our boss specifies. They have no effect on the workings of the command. The mixture of uppercase and lowercase is also for our convenience. It's normal programming style to put the MySQL commands such as insert into, values etc. in uppercase to make them stand out and make the code easier to read. In fact, they're not case sensitive and will still work if they're in lowercase or even a mixture. But it's considered bad style to have them in anything other than uppercase, so stick with uppercase. Database names, table names and field names should all be treated as case sensitive. Although in Windows they will still work if the case is wrong, when we upload this project onto a web server it will be running on a Unix style system. On Unix and Linux, these are all case sensitive, so the case must be correct or it will fail to work. In the next video, we'll get some more data into our table and learn how to perform searches on it.